It's very common for mold designers to take big mold inserts and break them up into small mold inserts. It often helps with manufacturability and mold maintenance down the road. So today, I'm gonna show you how to machine parts like this efficiently on the wire EDM. All right, guys, first things first, we're gonna get our work holding set up. Now, to hold our part, we're gonna use our System 3R chuck, and we're gonna clamp it to our table with this ground edge facing down. All right, now that we got that set up, let's go ahead and get our material loaded into its holder. All right, to hold our material, we're gonna use this holder right here, which is primarily used for electrodes, but there's no rule book, so today, we're gonna hold this block of steel with it. All right, now the reason we're using this chuck is because it's gonna give us the ability to easily index our part for our OP2 setup. So we can throw it in here for OP1, tighten down our screw, and then when we're done with OP1, all we do is loosen that up, we'll index our part, put it back in there, tighten it up, and we're good to go. Now that we got our work holding set up, let's go ahead and get our wire installed. We're gonna be using AC Cut AH900 wire. This is 10 thousandths diameter zinc coated brass wire, and it's really the best type of wire we could have chosen for the highest quality and the best accuracy. Now this is one of my favorite features about our Cup P550 Pro. When you install a new wire spool, it's pretty likely that the end of your wire is gonna be all bent from when you pulled it through the pulleys. Well, this isn't gonna go through our guide, but you don't wanna cut it with mechanical cutters because that's gonna leave a burr on your wire and then it also won't go through your guide. So a lot of people use lighters or something like that, but with our Cut P550 Pro, we got our annealing post right here, and this is essentially gonna stretch our wire until it breaks, and it's gonna leave a perfect edge that'll fit right through our guide. Check it out. Look at that. No burrs, no bends or kinks. Everything's perfect. All right, that's enough talk. Let's get to machining. If you guys are enjoying the content, please hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get to a million before the end of the year and we could use your help. All right, so our rough pass just finished. Let's go ahead and pull our slug. Look at that. Man, sometimes the slugs look cooler than the parts. But hey, now that we got this out of the way, let's go ahead and finish our trim cuts. All right, so we're currently on our first trim pass. I wanna take a second to show you guys the profile that we're actually cutting. Now, if you notice, we've got five different rows of inserts. This is my favorite way to make these kind of parts on the wire. We gang them all up in a block, and then we can actually just index it 90 degrees when our first operation's over, and we'll cut the other profile into our parts. And when it's all said and done, we're gonna have 15 mold inserts that are accurate to within a couple tenths. They have a beautiful surface finish and only took us two operations to do it. So what kind of technology are we actually using for our burn? Right down here at the bottom of this screen, we have a priority tab. And if we click on that, we have three options, precision, speed, or we can activate turbo mode. Click here on turbo. We've got our technology right here. As you can see, we've got an average speed of 1.3 inches an hour, but our trim cuts are gonna be much faster than they would if we prioritized accuracy. All right, guys, so we just finished OP1. The finish on the part looks beautiful. Now we're gonna index it 90 degrees and start with OP2. So for our second operation, we're actually gonna be establishing this profile on all three rows of our parts. Now the challenge with that is we actually already have this V feature cut into our parts from our first operation. As we cut along this V, the thickness of our cut is actually gonna be increasing. Now luckily for us, we have the ISPS feature on our Cup E550 Pro, and that's gonna allow us to automatically make adjustments to our parameters as the thickness of our cut increases. This can be valuable because the amount of skilled EDM operators out there is pretty scarce, but the ISPS allows a less skilled operator to accomplish some complex contours without having to worry about wire breaks or other issues like that. Now once this is finished, we're gonna be ready to cut all of our inserts off and we'll have 15 completed mold inserts. 
The challenge with cutting off these parts is in each row we have five individual parts. If we cut all the way through, all these parts are going to fall at the same time and potentially damage each other. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to stop short. We're going to leave like a 20 thousandths tab on each row. We'll break all the parts off individually so they don't get damaged. It. We were able to make 15 hardened mold inserts in two operations on our Cup P550 Pro and the dimensions are accurate to within a tenth. We did a rough and four skim passes and we used turbo technology which was able to allow us to achieve a cycle time of two hours per insert. If you want to see more awesome medium content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're looking for tooling, go to store.titansofcnc.com. You won't find better prices anywhere else. I'm also going to be posting these parts on CNC Expert. That's the platform that we made for machinists by machinists. If you don't have a profile yet, go to cncexpert.com. Make sure you set one up. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you next time.